good day. Uh, this, my name is Juan Prince. Uh, I will be your presenter on the mechanic drawings group 10. <coughs> the scope of the work on this year is uh, uh, that, uh, this term that you are doing uh, mechanical drawings. Uh, for the Afrikaans leaders, Misschien moet ons maar kijken of ons in Engels die aanbieding kan doen. Als het voor enige probleem is, die slides wat jullie het, het Afrikaanse gedeelte bij. Als je kan daarop volgen, en ik zal het meer die tijd zo tussenin bij verduidelijk ons ook woordschakelen in Afrikaans en Engels. Als jullie dan niet bestaan, moet jullie maar niet van mij dan maar dit aanbieden. Doe de hulp. Time we will use the reference book of Johan Engelbert, that is your prescribed book, Engineering Graphic Design for Senior Secondary Phase, that blue book that you've got. Um, let's start now on. Construction, so you know how to use the, the different line types. And this now on the outside line or A line or construction line B The fear can't be. Um, good day, guys. Um, we are just experiencing um, some uh, technical difficulties. Um, we are just trying to get the presenter online. If you can just keep online for us. Thank you.
Hola, Joan. Hola, Joan. ¿Qué animal es? Hello. Hello, can you my word? Can you let me know? Ja, das ist aber dann hier können wir anfangen mit der Präsentation. Great. Was sei? So, you let me know if you want to take the skill of your online afgang. Das das du erträg ja, so ihr kann dann nicht anfangen, wo ihr nur lost da was. So the new concept that we are doing now will be the third, first angle and third angle projection that we dealt with, uh, but with the emphasis on third angle projection. Now, so feel further taking the projector in front of the isometrics of taking Then the next part will be castings and objects that will be sections in various ways, and, and uh, the representing uh, the cutting planes and expose them in the hidden detail. Also, the skillene gietstukke and voorwerpen getekend word, waarvan dan die snijvlakke gedoen word om op derde borge detail bloot te le, om die snijvlakke van verskillende projectie vlakke aan te doen. Daar is redelijk reels rondom die snijvlakke. Op die einde van die aanbieding, dan sal ek julle na sekere bladse hier te verwees in die handboek, wat julle na kan kom that all peers are open to. On the end of this uh, slide, we will, I will show you some, some guidance in the, the textbook where you can find in the multi-view drawings or the casting and the cutting planes, the rules and regulations about that. And uh, uh, you can find that in, in, in the textbook. Right, let's get to some projection theory. Okay. Projectie theorie. Uh, Autografische projectie is een methode om een driedimensionele voorwerp zoals die uh, in een tweedimensionele vlak voor te stellen. Uh, Autografie is een means of representing a 3D object and then put it into a, a 2D platform. Now, whenever you project a, 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 a object towards a projection plane, which is there, and, and it's a perpendicular projection towards the line of, of, of sight, then you will find this, the true dimensions on the image that it is. Now, the, the, the image on that, or the projection plane, will be on all three uh, possible views. So it can be from this view, or it can be from the view on this from this angle or the view from the top angle. Now let's see what is the difference then between a first and a third angle uh, projection. In a first angle projection, if you've got a certain plane, which is that plane there, then that is the first quadrant and that is the, the third quadrant. Now, in the first quadrant, you'll find the first angle projection. The situation easily to show that is when you view it from a certain direction, your line of sight, your projection will be on a plane opposite the way that you are viewing it. Uh, I see the line from van, 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 van richting kijk on to project here. And here, Stokes, is that from the direction, project you the answer over on a flag that on the other side is from the two to do. But the most by the third example is actually quite easy. When the flag now where do you the project you reflect actually on the flag the answer. So in this case, you can then from above or below you project that above answer above up. Die vlak. Nou, als mensen die vlakken opvouwen, dan krijgen mensen nou die, die, die verschillende manieren die we ons nu doen. Net zo vannacht, als je naar nou die isometrische tekening kijkt, of die 3D drawing, 
if you look at the 3D drawing, then you will see that there is a left side, a front view, a right side, a top view. So there's six sides on any 3D drawing, but you will only see of the, uh, the, the, the three sides from the line of view that you are viewing. Uh, when you uh, uh, look at the three dimensions, it's actually six kanten. But the direction where you look at is the direction where you the most detail can can see. Good. We can also on with the with the. As we look at the projections, we see that there is a door, and there is a door to the forward. Then it is a forward direction, a right direction, a right direction, a right direction, and then a right direction. The linker can't answer is no reborg for you. You won't see the left hand side view. You won't see the rear view and the top view you will see now. Now the layout of, of that after you fold open uh, the, 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 the this this the, the box that I showed you there, um, you will have then a configuration of views that you explode. So the front view is in the first plane. The right side view will be next to the front view in this plane. Now, if I go to the left view, on the other side, you will see that if I look at from that side, those lines and these lines and these lines will be hidden. That is why it shows with dotted lines as a hidden feature. Look at from the top view and you project it to the top, then you'll see that those lines and those lines, and even that one you will see from the top view, the form of what it is. Because you must now understand that the depth that you, perception that you have there, and this, you won't see it to the inside, but do it through this projection method. Okay, uh, then there is also a symbol that you use. There's a symbol for a, a, a third angle orthographic projection. Again, uh, if this is the front view of the symbol, what you project from this side or you see from this side is projected on the front of that object. But first angle is what you see from this side, you project on the other side of the front view. And I th this is a very, very important concept that you will understand uh, for the third and first angle. What you see from the side, you project on the side. Third angle, what you see from the side, you project on the side. What you see from the side, you project on the right side. Right. If we now look at the Correlation of dimensions between the two, two and three D. Again, there you see your, your block. There's always on this side a projection plane reference, a length dimension, a width dimension, or a height dimension. So all the length dimensions will lie in this direction. So that is a length line. Uh, that is a length line. That is a length line. And and that must correlate with your front view, which is all the length dimensions. So if I look from the top, my length dimensions will be that line. It will be a length dimension there. So the top and the front view is a correlating of a length dimension together. As we speak now the four and one, so we see that the the afmetings with the of the length afmetings. Van altijd op die voor en die boeanser van die orthografische tekening leg. We go, uh, go to the, uh, the right side here, van die richting op. Dan is daar die witte dimensies, of the width dimensions. And the width dimensions lies on this area and it corresponds to the width dimensions on the top view. So that if, if, you, if you keep this in mind, it's very easy then to
to see the depth perception that you have from the different situations to get the plane that will lie there towards the plane that will lie there. In flak, what you in the front can see, in the flak, what you in the back can see. Right, let's get now to a possible um, application of, of what we have to do. Uh, you can do that and, and find yourself a, a graph paper, and on a graph paper, use it with a grid of uh, of a, a, a five millimeter uh, spacing, and you have now the, in a third angle your isometric drawing. Each of those blocks will present five millimeters, and the same happens here now. So you add one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, whatever. Add at this side for the front view. This is now the front view. Look at from that side. That is a height line, a height line. That's a length line, a length line. That's a height line, that's a work length, that's a work length. By as we have a length line, that's a length line. By as a work line, a work line. And by means of that, you can now draw this level. You'll see that this little block is deeper in, deeper in from this level that you find. So that de deeper level you'll find on this, and you see this is the width. So the width lines is in that line. So that distance from there to there will be that distance from there to there. The height is common on the front and the right view. So that side, that, line, that height line there, the line there is a, uh, a length line. That's the one that you'll find there. There. So if you do this now, the block, you can uh, you can draw these different views: front view, top view, right view. This is the third angle uh, dimension, a third angle uh, layout. The same. You do a little bit more expensive block. Take that block on your graph paper. Reproduce in the paper the, the, the orthographic drawing like that. That's an isometric drawing. This is a orthographic drawing. Note that that line inside, that skew line, is also now the hidden detail that you cannot see through that web, and that is a dotted line area. You bring it over to that side, you look at from that view, then you will see that the height line, distance from there to there, distance from there to there, and the height line is the same. And by means of that, you will now start to get the, the feeling of taking a three-dimensional figure over on a two-dimensional area. And with three views, you will have all the dimensions needed on a left or on a right view, a front view, a right view, and a top view. Right, let's start now on a drawing. Uh, on uh, the workbook that you have on page 35, uh, there's a drawing which looks like that. It's a drawing with in certain dimensions that you have. I didn't put the dimensions in now. On, on the PowerPoint was quite uh, challenging for this, but this is how the drawing looked like. You'll see that there is a, a block, and out of the block, there's a object being cut out into that. You see the green level there? That is the top level. You see that plane there? That's the front view plane. This is the right view plane. But you can also see that there is a depth dimension from that or a, a perception that you find from that area down into this, from this plane down to a new plane that will sit there. Now let's start, how do we draw this drawing? First of all, you have to draw two projection, projection lines in two flakke antwoord. So is that, on the way in the middle of your blood, uh, check mark of the tekening here 
is het uh, volle mate daag en pas en hier en pas in die trek via twee projectielijnen. Wil ik noem het projectielijn X en Y. Dan teken je die voorhand zo. Dat is van terug. You go back. You draw this front view. That front view. The ones that you see from this side. Of the same plane. The front view plane. Okay. And according to the dimensions, you draw that. Leave an equal space between that projection line and that projection line. That's why I put that circle in there, so that that line lines up with that, and this line lines up with the circle there. So you have an equal distance of your images from each of the projection lines that you draw. According to the scale that they ask, and according to that dimensions, Draw the first front view. Now project the right view. From the top part, project the line over, project that line over, project that line over, project this over, project that over. Now you look your drawing, you view the drawing from this side. You kijk dan naar die tekening van die kant af. En daar Area, die answer wat jy sien, en die answer in die achterkant. This face, this face, that face, that face, and that face on the back is what you will see in the drawing there, according to the dimensions. Now you draw a projection line at an angle of 45 degrees, towards that direction. Now you want to project this image over into that image. And you want to project that length lines up. You must remember that your top view has got width and length. Your voorhandsig is weite en lengte. Your voorhandsig, weite en lengte. Projecteer die lijnen op. En tot die 45 graden lijn en trek hulle oor. Naar die boonsigse kant. Project the lines, all the lines, up towards the 45 degree line. Project it over towards the position of where the top view will be. Okay. Now, all the length lines project it up so that you can find what is this image that you have to project on the top view. Now there is the image on the top view. That line is the one there. This dotted line is that little inside line there, which will be the line that lies there. Okay. Right. Go back to the isometric drawing. If you look at from the top, you'll have a block there. You'll see this image. You'll see part of that level there, that view. There's a die. What's the deal for the answer from Rossi? It is some of your line. You'll see that area. And you'll see there's a die area scene and it will be the area scene. Now we can die answer to. All these lines are light construction lines, the red ones. That other one is an outside line uh, of 0.5 and a nice sharp black line. Uh, the hidden detail that you see from the front view, from the front view, that hidden detail to that is a normal dotted line, 
in the dotted line of 0.3, .3 uh, uh, thickness and as well a normal B type of line, not a lighter line than the rest of them. Right, that is now the, the drawing and you can do that drawing on your leisure. This uh, uh, slide will be posted on the on the web uh, and uh, then you can you can do it uh, by by looking at some of the, the drawings on page 35 and there's a few other drawings as well available that you can do now if we are going to look further into the concepts of of, of casting sectioning hatching methods and so on the hatching methods on the textbook You'll find the, 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 the laws and regulations about that on uh, uh, page five, uh, number 21 to 37. Uh, make sure that you understand those type of, of, of uh, information because it will show you whenever you have to hatch a whip or how do you hatch a, 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 a uh, uh, Hole that's then drill through a object. Uh, you can work seen that the the um, first scribe handbook like that you read for daily war would that fiscal in the snake flock in our series could in convoy. But you would look sicker mark that both and more in 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 work some still a ticket and a sneak deal from the other but you let our society. Is net iets te kut. Dit wil sê is net enkel vaste model met geen ander dele wat binnen in die model en pas nie. Jy wil sê dat castings in jou tekstboek, there is no additional or or composite drawings where other parts fit into that casting. That is a level further on on grade eleven that you do. So for grade ten only on the castings, the sectioning, and the hatching methods. That's very important to do that uh, study onto that so that you can uh, acquaint yourself with, uh, with uh, the, the, the content on that. Remember that bolts and nuts, boat and mura, it's not part of the grade 10 content. Uh, you can, you can uh, eliminate that part. And it's not necessary to, to go all the uh, necessary constructions out of that. Um, so that comes to the end of our presentations. If there's any questions so far, I'm waiting for the questions to see what we can uh, uh, explain further on. Did I see any questions? Um, Johan, um, there was one or two questions in the question box. Um, if I can read it to you. No. Um, so one of the questions, question it's in the question box. I'm going to read it to you. The question was, um, what's the difference between the first angle and third angle viewing in the image? Like if you have to put them next to each other. So what the difference is between those two angles? Okay, let's go back to that slide. The difference between a first angle and the third angle projection. Remember that in the Paper two on the on the mechanical part. You're working primarily with a third angle layout, not a first angle. In the first paper, that is the first angle projection. Now all that happens now, you still have a front view. If I, if I can explain it like this, you still have the front view, but now the top view, as I said, will be projected over on the opposite side where the bottom view on the moment is. But it won't look like the top bottom view, it will look like the top view. The left view will now shift over to this side, into next to the front view. So the three main first angle projections will then be on, 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 on this. Uh, in that place, the three first angle projections, the three main views, a front view, a left view, and a top view. That usually changes now around, if I can look at the top, 
um, sure that someone from the uh, the uh, you need you need to take them to the answer uh, financial matrix. Uh, this drawing is actually a third angle uh, projection of uh, the block because you will see that the front view is into this direction, the left view into this direction, and the top view. Now the other views is uh, doesn't have the same. Uh, content or the same images that you'll find on this side. If you go to the third angle view, you'll find it like this. It will be rotated, but on third angle, there must always be a reference line, a reference or viewpoint, which will be on that side because you start off with your front view instead of the front view from this side. And that gives you the difference between the the two views. Anything else? Um, the last question that I can see here is, um, is a third angle like a net, um, if that makes sense to you? A first angle like a net? The third angle. Like a net? Yes. Uh, right. I, I think what you understand now is you're talking about the projection plane, the projection plane. Uh, when you do a third angle, you project towards your projection plane. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one there. Uh, with the first angle, you, you, you're projecting towards on the other side of the object. And the third angle, if that is the third angle projection, you look at and, and you, you, you want to see the top view, then you project it through the netting or the plane, and it will show the image in front of the object. In, in first angle, opposite the object, viewing top view, opposite the object, in the front view is the, the netting or the, uh, the plane will be between the object and your line of view, line of sight. Does, it under, does this bring your answer to you? Um, I sh I'm sure it would. Uh, yes, it seems like he understands it now. Um, there is no other specific um, subject related questions at this stage. Nothing further. I hope that they understood it very well. What they have to do now is go to their uh, textbooks and out of the textbooks, um, uh, do some of those examples. I think there is a new timetable available now uh, that you have to uh, submit certain uh, tasks. Uh, there's, there's, there's various tasks available. But I think to practice a little bit on the third angle, is to get that graph paper situation, put, reproduce that drawing, or reproduce that. Uh, look at your textbook, and you'll find various of those type of of examples available, so that you can practice the, the the layout of a orthographic drawing from a uh, uh, isometric drawing. Uh, it's important to understand the, the basis of your levels of the faces that you have. That face is in front of that face. And that face is then what you are seeing on this right view. This face is in, this is, in, is in the front and that face is in the back. I call that a depth perception. A depth perception. From there a depth perception down to the other part. So because the top view only have the length and breadth, you cannot see the depth perception of that, but you'll see it onto the left view or the right side view. Okay. Um, then, uh, as I said, the, the work later on to to do the oh, what happened now uh, to do the further study. 
it's very important. You'll see in the textbook on, on, on those pages that I showed you there, various ways of how to cut an object uh, and, and what a, a half sectional and a full sectional part. Maybe in the next webinar, we will deal with that type of part of the, of the study. We'll go further on with uh, uh, more explanations on that. But the, the textbook is quite, uh, uh, it's quite uh, clear of what has to be done. Now, if you handbook it, as you the get stuck in the snake kijk, as it really duidelijk wat aan kan doen wordt, net by seker maak dat jy al die type van 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 uh, wete wat aan is, uh, toepas op een van die tekeningen verder. Um, it's understood. Anything else? Um, I just would want to see um, if there's anything else. Um, there was one more question. Um, can you please explain how to apply the measurements when draw on an A4 graph paper? The measurements on an A4 graph paper, let's go to that slide again. You'll see on the slide when you uh, uh, enlarge it, uh, because the slide will be given to you. That on the isometric drawing, there's a grid, a grid of lines of 30 degrees like that, 30 degrees like that. And uh, if it's a five millimeter grid line uh, that you use, you just add five, 10, 15, or one, two, three, four, five blocks. And that one, two, three, four, five blocks will be carried over to one, two, three, four, five blocks on this side. So that the proportion that you have from there to there, the blocks from there to there will be the same. Uh, when you draw it in, on, on, on your uh, uh, measurements, uh, let's go to that. If that measurement is 70 millimeters on a scale one is to one, then your drawing on that line will be 70 millimeters on a scale one is to one. Usually leave there about 20 millimeter space or 15 millimeter space between your projection lines. So that will be 70. If you go up and that is maybe 20 millimeter, and that is a 20 millimeter, that means that that block is then 40 millimeters high. If you look at that distance there, and they say that is a 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter, that means that that distance from there to there, from there is a 50 millimeter. Uh, I think in the book, you'll find that there's no dimension there. Uh, you can assume that that is the same dimension that they did there as 10 millimeter. Is that, was that clear? Yes, it seems like it. Um, the last question that I can see here is, um, can, can you be asked to have a different scale? Yes, uh, there's many types of scale. All depends on what, uh, where does your drawing fit into that uh, page that you're drawing? Uh, if you take, for instance, a house, a house that you live in, uh, <clears throat> that won't fit on A3, uh, on an A3 paper, the floor plan. So what we do, we draw it according to a scale, one is to 50 or one is to 100. That means for each 100 millimeter, the increment on your ruler will be one millimeter. For each 50 meters, if it's a scale one is to 50, for each 50, your scale will be one millimeter. That is a reducing scale. But there's also a scale two to one or five to one, where each uh, uh, one millimeter is now enlarged to five millimeter to make it bigger. So you have to uh, consider on the end your scales to fit into a page according to certain scales. These scales one to one, one to two, which is half scale, one to five, one to 33, one to uh, 100, or you can also take your calculator, take that distance uh, of 100 millimeter, divide it by two, or five, or 10, and that is the distance uh, that you will then uh, uh, measure on a normal ruler. So there's two ways of doing a scale. Scale from a scale rule, where you take this, this specific scale, one to 10 or one to five, and according to that, you are drawing the length of the line. Or you take your calculator, 
take the 70 millimeter or 50 millimeter or that I mentioned that you want to scale down and then scale it down to one is to two or one is to three divided by five or divide by two. But just remember when you do that on a, on a calculator that you use the same division on all on, on, on that same drawing. Because if you are going to take now a 50 millimeter on the one side and divide it by five and the other one on a 70 millimeter by two, then you will definitely have a distorted view or distorted image. That was that clear? Yes, yeah, it seems like um he said he he said thank you. Um it's it seems like he understands what um what needs to be done. Um that was the only questions in the question box um that was subject related. Um I don't see any other questions. Okay. And just on the end what I want to say to everybody, I'm glad that you are uh, uh doing that. Stay home. Flatten the curve, look after yourself. God bless you.